In this video, I want to talk about an AR1 process with rho equal to 1, which another word for that is a random walk. So we know that this particular process is going to look something like xt is equal to xt minus 1 plus some error et, where this et is iid with a mean of 0 and a variance of sigma squared. And we already know from our discussion of AR1 processes that we require that rho, if there was a rho in this relationship which would go here, has to be less than 1 in order for the process to be stationary. So when we're setting rho equal to 1, we know that we're going to be dealing with a non-stationary time series, but we need to think about why is our time series going to be non-stationary. And in order to do that, the best thing to do is first of all to back substitute in for xt. So if we back substitute in for xt, we get that xt is equal to xt minus 2 plus et minus 1 plus et. And then if we were to continue doing this all the way to the first period, we would get that xt was equal to x0 plus the sum from i equals 0 to t minus 1 of e t minus i. And we could get this second term just by noting the fact that we add on an extra et term for every sort of extra back substituted value of x which we go back to. So we've got that xt is equal to x0 plus this sum term here. So now we're in a position whereby we can think about the properties of an AR1 process with rho equal to 1, which we call a random walk. So the first property is that if we look at the expectation of xt, we can see that this is just going to be equal to the expectation of x0 plus the expectation of this second term here. But this second term here, if we just write it out, it's going to be the sum from i equals 0 to t minus 1 of the expectation of e t minus i. And since we know that each of these ETs is IID with a mean of 0, this second term goes, it's all equal to 0. So we've got that the expectation of XT is equal to the expectation of X0. Well, that's easily dealt with just in a similar way that we dealt with it previously. We just set the expectation of X0 equal to 0. And then that implies that we have the expectation of XT, which is equal to 0. So we have a process which is constant in mean. So it's not the case that a random walk has a uh, is not constant in mean. It is actually a constant in mean process. So it's not non-stationary for that reason. Then if we look at the second condition, so we, we need to look at the variance of xt now. So if we look at the variance of xt using this particular relationship which we derived down here, well that would be equal to the variance of x0, but if we choose x0 as just being given it's just a constant, we can sort of think about it as not having a variance. So then we have that the variance of xt is equal to the sum from i equals 0 to t minus 1 of the variance of epsilon t minus i. And notice that we don't have any covariance terms when I take the variance operator from the outside to the inside because of the fact that our et are independent of one another. So then we notice that the variance of each of these terms is just sigma squared and we've got t of them because this sum is starting at i equals 0 and going all the way up to t minus 1. So we've got that the variance of xt is equal to t times sigma squared. And notice that this isn't a constant, it's a function of time, hence our process is non-stationary because of the fact that its variance isn't constant. So that's the reason that a random walk is itself a non-stationary time series. And let's look at the third and final condition for a series to be stationary. So here we're looking at the covariance between xt and xt plus h. And in order to do this, we first of all note that we can just write down straight away what the relationship between xt plus h is with xt. Well, xt plus h is just equal to xt plus the sum from i equals 0 to h minus 1 of e t plus h minus i. So if we just replace x t plus h with this particular term here, we have that the covariance of x t with x t plus h is equal to the covariance of x t 
with xt plus this sum here, where the sum goes from i equals 0 to h minus 1 of e t plus h minus i. And finally, we note that there is no covariance between xt and this error term here because of the fact that these errors are independent. So we can just get rid of this term here. So we're finally left with the covariance of xt with itself, which is just the definition of the variance of xt. And notice that because of the fact that the variance is equal to t times sigma squared, the covariance is also a function of time. So we have a violation of the third condition as well. So in summary, the reason that a random walk is non-stationary is because of the fact that its variance is increasing over time and its covariance is changing along with time. So the covariance is a function of time as well as its variance.